I think I'm going to do something a little different today and show you how to put together a vegan friendly bento using a collection of recipes from before. But I'm also going to be showing you a few new ones, so stick around. One of the great things about bento is that you can pack it with a huge variety of foods to make for a fun meal that never gets old. Although this bento is vegan, it's packed with protein thanks to our plant-based tamagoyaki and by using ingredients like sweet corn powder, shiitake mushrooms, and kombucha, this bento is loaded with umami. I've covered some of these dishes before and I'll link to the recipes in the description down below. But today I want to show you an easy marinated quick pickle along with a way to make tamagoyaki without the tamago. So let's jump into our ingredients. For the quick pickles, I'm using a head of purple cauliflower and one third cup of seasoned sushi vinegar. I'll include a link to the recipe in the description. For our vegan tamagoyaki, I'm using 170 grams of silken tofu, 35 grams of short grain rice flour, 28 grams of chickpea flour, three quarters of a cup of water, and one tablespoon of vegetable oil. To season this, I'm using a small dried shiitake mushroom, one tablespoon of sweet corn powder, a half teaspoon of kombucha, two teaspoons of sugar, one teaspoon of soy sauce, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a small pinch of turmeric. Let's start by preparing our head of cauliflower for our quick pickles. I'm gonna move the knife around the stem to trim off the leaves. Then I'm going to work my way around the stem to remove the florets. It's useful to have a variety of sizes when packing a bento, and you can always trim them down later, so there's no need to make these any smaller. By the way, I'm using purple cauliflower today, but you can make this with any color of cauliflower. Now I'm going to dump this into a pot of boiling salted water. If you cook these for too long, they're going to lose their color and get mushy, so they only need about a minute and a half. Okay, these are done, so let's drain them. And then I'm gonna add these to a bowl and pour over our seasoned sushi vinegar. You should see the color change from indigo to magenta almost instantly. This is caused by the anthocyanins in purple cauliflower reacting to the vinegar. The pigments turn blue when the pH is above seven and they turn red when the pH falls below seven. This is a fun trick to do with kids to get them into cooking. Now I'm going to transfer these to a non-reactive container to let them cool and pickle. Ideally, you want to let these soak overnight, but if you're in a rush, you can use them as soon as they've cooled. For our tamagoyaki, I'm mixing it with a stick blender, so I've got a beaker and I'm going to add the tofu, rice flour, chickpea flour, water, and oil. Then I'm gonna use a microplane to grate the dried shiitake into a powder. You can also do this using a spice grinder or a mortar and pestle. Next, I'm gonna add the corn powder, kombucha, sugar, salt, soy sauce, and turmeric. The turmeric is mainly for color and a little goes a long way, so don't overdo it. Now I'm gonna grab the stick blender and puree this. You can also do this in a full-size blender or a food processor. You want the mixture to be smooth and about the viscosity of a beaten egg. Some types of tofu contain less water than others, so if it's looking too thick, just add a little more water. Alright, our tamagoyaki mixture is looking good, but before we cook it, I'm gonna add a bit of oil to a small bowl and fold up a quarter of a paper towel like this. Then I'm gonna soak this in the oil. Now we can use this to oil a non-stick tamagoyaki pan that's over medium-low heat. You can do this in a round omelet pan as well, but this tamagoyaki is super sticky, so it has to have a good non-stick coating. Then I'm gonna add some of the vegan tamago mixture and spread it around the pan. I normally like making my tamagoyaki over low heat so the egg doesn't brown and get dry, but with this mixture, I recommend doing it over a slightly higher heat. That's because we want to get a nice browned layer that's just shy of burnt. 
This not only helps to keep it from sticking, it also transforms the texture from gooey mochi to tender egg. Once you see it turning brown around the edges, use a spatula to roll it up. I didn't do it here, but I recommend oiling your spatula to keep the tamagoyaki from sticking to it. Now I'm gonna oil up the pan again with our paper towel, and then we just repeat the process. Your layers don't have to be perfect, but just make sure you get a nice brown color on every side of the tamagoyaki before you move on. This might mean pausing for a minute and letting the surface of your roll brown before moving on to the next layer. This recipe makes enough vegan tamago for two smaller tamagoyaki or one very large one, so once you're happy with the size, take some time to roll it around and ensure you have a caramel brown color on all four sides. Okay, let's transfer this onto a cutting board to cool completely and set. If you try and cut it while it's still hot, it'll still be soft and gooey on the inside, which will make it almost impossible to slice. Before we pack our bento, I want to take a moment to acknowledge all of my supporters. Whether you're pitching in via Patreon, sharing my videos with friends, or just dropping positive vibes in the comments, your support is what keeps me going, so thank you. If you're learning from my videos and want to help, hit the link in the description down below to see what you can do. One of my tricks for making bento easy is to always keep the fridge stocked with make-ahead side dishes. This can be as simple as making some extra portions of a side dish for dinner every night. Today we have some leftover sesame spinach from last night and I'll include a link in the description below. We also have our cauliflower quick pickles and some kimpira gobo which I posted a recipe for last week. Okay, our tamagoyaki should be cool by now, so let's slice it up. Perfect, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I don't think I could tell this is eggless if I hadn't made it myself. It looks like this wasn't quite cooled all the way to the center, and you can see it's still a little sticky. If this happens to you, just wash and wet your knife between slices. To pack our bento, I'm using this oval bento box with a traditional motif on the lid. I'm gonna fill the left side with some multi-grain rice. How much rice you add is up to you, but this bento box is pretty small, so I'm gonna fill it a little less than halfway with rice. Next, I'm gonna add some kimpira gobo to the top corner. When packing a bento box, I find it helpful to mentally divide it up into triangles where you want your food to go. I'm going to be using the kimpira as a base to prop up the tamagoyaki, so I'm also going to lay down a shiso leaf in between to create some visual separation between the two dishes. Food isn't like Tetris or Legos, so you might not get the placement perfect the first time, but it's okay to go back in and shift things around to make them fit how you imagined. Now I'm going to add some of our sesame spinach in the corner next to our tamagoyaki. Next I'm going to use some slices of watermelon radish as a divider to separate the spinach from our pickled cauliflower. I usually like to start packing my bento boxes from the back and work my way to the front. This helps give your bento a layered look and prevents the food from shifting when you transport it. Now we've got just enough room for a few florets of cauliflower. We could call it a day here, but I still see a little space that I want to fill, so I'm going to drop a little umeboshi into the gap to close it. See how the food doesn't move around when I shake the bento? That's how you know you've done a good job packing it. Alright, let's cover this up with the lid. And then I'm going to wrap the whole bento up in a furoshiki, which is a traditional Japanese fabric for wrapping parcels like this. All right, who's ready to try this out? Let's unwrap it. Open it up. Oh, it looks so good. Itadakimasu. All right, I think I'm going to go in for the tamagoyaki first. It looks just like an egg tamagoyaki. Hmm. I'm not going to lie. It's not exactly like tamagoyaki but the balance of sweet and savory with the umami is spot on, and the texture is like a soft-cooked tamagoyaki. Mmm. 
That's delicious. Got some kimpira recipe in the link below. Crunchy, earthy, delicious. All right, let's go for some of that gumae. Oh, the spinach is perfectly cooked. It's got tons of umami and that nutty sesame is delicious. All right, and we can't forget our beautiful purple cauliflower. Oh, it's tangy and sweet and provides such a nice contrast to that creamy gomae and the rich tamagoyaki. That's one of the great things about bento is you've got a little bite of all different colors, textures, flavors, so you can keep going around and round and never get the same bite twice. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to let me know by giving this a big thumbs up and by dropping a comment down below. Well, I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of this bento, but check out this playlist for more plant-based dishes and I'll catch you in the next one.